All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here with the Mars Rahu conjunction, which we have discussed two times. I have also discussed about Ekadashis, but what we forget is when there's a Mars Rahu conjunction, there's a Mars Ketu opposition, right? That's a very interesting axis which comes about whenever Mars and Rahu are conjunct. So we primarily discuss that conjunction we say what are the things that can happen but we often undermine what are the things that can also happen with this crazy opposition why do i say crazy because it's like two brothers coming together <laughs> what happens there can be a lot of you know, sharing of love and affection and friendship or there could be animosity rivalry, right? That would be deceit also. So therefore it's very interesting uh, for uh, this conjunction especially why? Because if you see this conjunction is happening in the Kalpurush Kundalini's 1-7 axis, right? So we have Aries and then we have of course Libra, right? So therefore this conjunction, we know Mars and Rahu are in Aries and then uh, Ketu is in Libra, right? And then Mars from Aries is in Multicone because Mars is in Multicone. Of course, the degrees may vary, but Mars is considered to be in Multicone as per the sign Aries. And from there, he's aspecting this Ketu, right? So you have to understand what does Ketu represents. Ketu represents confusion within us. Ketu represents things that we know deep down inside, but we fail to acknowledge. Ketu represents things which we want to believe, but somewhere we are convinced that it may not turn into reality, right? And as usual, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe to it down below. And if you like this video, please click the thumbs up at the end. And uh, if you want a consultation from me, please go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will help you overcome this conjunction. So now, we have to understand that we should not have this mindset to overcome any conjunction, right? Or run away from a conjunction. Because when conjunctions appear in the sky or in our birth chart, they tell us something about our nature, which we can fix if we change our inner consciousness, inner perception. So therefore, I have received so many mails uh, where people have asked me, you know, sir, how can I escape this Mars Rahu connection? Well, I'm like, why do you want to escape it? Because when there's a connection, what it does is, is it exposes some vulnerabilities uh, within us actually. That is all it does. And then when we see that these vulnerabilities are there within us, we are afraid of ourselves. We are afraid of the situation. We are afraid of other people, we are afraid of authority. We are afraid of anybody and everybody, right? So therefore, we can decide to run away from things, but we can't do it any longer when these uh, conjunctions are approaching uh, closer and closer in degree, right? Like even in my case and so many other people, I know because Mars and Rahu and this, you know, Mars Ketu opposition is approaching closer day by day so people are telling me that you know they're losing their minds and things are seemingly much more bloated than they are right so coming back to mars and ketu so what does ketu represent ketu represents some unfulfilled frustration within us which we might have tried in the past see they say rahu represents desires of the future and ketu represents things that we have done in the past, but not necessarily that we have obtained fulfillment through them, right? So therefore, now Ketu is in the sign of Libra. Now what is Libra? Libra represents the other world, the external world basically, which means other people or, you know, your spouse or it could be your teammates, your colleagues, your business partners, anybody, right? Even people within your family. Now, you are seeing me, I am Libra for you. I am seeing you, you are Libra for me, right? So therefore, 
when Ketu is in Libra, what happens is there can be confusion in context of how to deal with other people. As simple as that. Now, what can happen is when Ketu transits Libra, some memory of the past can come back to haunt us. Some memory, past means could be of this life or the previous life. What's, but let's talk of this life, right? Uh, so, it can happen that in the past you had experienced uh, certain relationships which did not work. Not only personal relationships, it could be business relationships also or friendships. And then now the same memory is back haunting you. And that is forcing you to do certain things which uh, may not be necessarily also there in your current relationships with human beings, right? But why are we doing it? Because subconsciously we have a fear that the same thing is going to manifest again to us in this life. So therefore, uh, we can have this untold fear within us, which tells us that the the same fate is going to repeat. Okay, So if you have this kind of a fear within relationships, at least at, at the current moment, then you really have to understand that you should not give into this morbid fear because what Mars does is he is throwing his seventh aspect directly to Ketu. So what happens when Mars aspects Ketu from either the fourth or seventh or the eighth, uh, I mean, with the eighth, fourth, seventh or the eighth aspect, especially when he aspects to the seventh aspect, what happens? He gives you a feeling that you must achieve this now. So, so imagine a situation where there is some frustration, there is some unfulfilled desire and there is some trauma from the past which is coming but we want to escape that trauma or we want to prove to that person that yes, we are superior to you or we are better than you or whatever, a number of things, right? So what happens at that time? Well, uh, it's a very precarious situation because we have to understand that when we are convinced deep down inside about something, either it's good or bad, then no matter whoever tells us in whatever possible way, it's very difficult for us ourselves to change our conviction, right? What to speak of other people trying to change our convictions. So we have to understand that we should not destroy our present and the future by holding on to the past because there could be certain patterns which you can see which uh, might repeat when this conjunction uh, is there. So when you see these patterns repeating from the past, your mind may tell you, your mind may cheat you, your mind may threaten you, your mind may mm, put you into confusion by saying that it has always been like this. All right? And it will always be like this and it is like this at the moment. But that's not true because dashas change, right? Your mahadasha will change, your antadasha will change, your pratyantara will change, later transits will change. So just because you have had a few bad experiences in life, it doesn't mean your life is ruined, right? So therefore, do not punish yourself for things which you could not achieve in the past especially when it comes to deals, negotiations and relationships. And also do not last on others because they are not able to fulfill their responsibilities because it can happen that they have the best interests in their mind, just like you, hopefully. <laughs> but then they are not able to fulfill it. For some reason, things are out of control, right? So therefore, before you blast on somebody, before you put that trigger, you got to understand that you may regret it later. All right. So therefore, uh, please read the Bhagavad Gita. Do fasting on Ekadashis. Do fasting on Tuesdays, especially, right? And then you will be able to calm down your mind. Try to do more and more fasting. Try to eat once in a day if you are if you are losing your mind because of this conjunction, right? So therefore. Once you realize that certain things which has happened to me is because of my own karma, then you understand how to move on with life because then you will realize that, yes, it's not that 
always the same thing is going to repeat. So therefore, forgive yourself for the things which you could not give to others. And also forgive others for the things which they could not give you. But of course, there's a catch here. Um, there may be people who might try to uh, sneak into your life again during this connection. So you really have to check and make sure that those people who did something wrong to you and who are now trying to get back to your life are having the best interests for you. Their interests might change or I mean might have changed or might have not changed, right? So therefore, make sure that you can judge your, you judge their interests in regards to why they want to re-enter your life, all right? So therefore, understand that you cannot fulfill everybody's desire and neither can everybody fulfill your desire, all right? And that's exactly the balance of Libra and Aries. Everybody else and myself, myself and everybody else, all right? Thank you very much for your patience. If you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you like this video, please click the thumbs up and share it with your family, friends, colleagues, relatives, everybody else. And if you want a consultation, my website is down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him for sure. <laughs> Thank you.